What up, watch peeps? I always get excited when Traska announces a new watch. Their last release, the Dual Crown Venture, was a gorgeous watch. And while I know a lot of you love the dual time functionality of the internal bezel, that's not really a function that I use. But if you, like me, agree that more crowns equals more better, but maybe a more traditional compressor style is more your style then this just might be the trasca you need let's check it out i'm pete and we are chilling with watches let's check i am wearing the trasca commuter and man i've said it on instagram recently but every time i wear this watch i remember just about how perfect it is i don't think i'm gonna ever get rid of this one i love this watch but trasca has done it again so on the heels of the venture comes the seafarer trasca always has fantastic packaging a simple box but i really like their single watch carrier also has the sweet pad to keep it from scratching up on the case back but check this guy out boom as you can see we have a more traditional compressor style with an inner dive time bezel instead of the dual time bezel that we had on the venture now i'd love that quirky offset crown on the venture but this design just might speak to me a little bit more so what do we have here we have a 38 and a half millimeter compressor style case and i'll tell you what the sizing on this thing is just about perfect now these come in four colors you have this new color here which is called sun bleached orange and you know what i am about it but there's also a white and a black dial that have a black internal bezel and then there's of course the mint colored dial which uses the same kind of bluish grayish color internal bezel price i do not have a fixed price yet but i'm assuming it will be similar to the venturer which was 585 let's start by taking a closer look at this dial because it is a little bit of a departure from some uh, previous Traska dials in that it is a printed dial not uh, applied indices and I do not think that is a downgrade in any way on this watch one of my favorite things about it is that it is printed I love the marker shapes this kind of lozenges you have at 12, 3, 6, and 9. And then I love the extended minute track lines that come out to reach the circle markers for all the other hours. I just think that's a really cool design. It's visually appealing to me. It just looks fantastic. Now, as far as their logo and fonts go, we have, you know, their standard Trasca logo at 12 o'clock with the printing of their brand name underneath that. And then at six o'clock, you have the very simple automatic and the water resist rating. I think that's very tastefully done, just the right amount of dial text, not overdone. And their font goes really well with the rest of the dial. There's a really great hand choice going on here as well. They look like simple stick hands at first, but if we take a closer look, you'll notice there are more details that we might have missed. It's kind of a step design in that the hands get thinner at the very tip there, and those wider kind of wing sections closer to the base are actually beveled, if I can get the light on, they actually angle down, with help, which helps catch the light and helps with legibility. Now the crystal is what I would call a slightly domed box sapphire, really pretty crystal. I love the profile view of it. Also double domed, as you can see, you still have legibility from this extreme oblique angle. Now also underneath that beautiful sapphire is the internal bezel. Now I don't know if I'm misremembering, but this one feels like it's a little tighter, a little more resistance than I remember on the Venture. I could be remembering wrong, I don't have one here to compare it to, but I really like the tactile feel and response you get from this bezel and I did not even bump it and move it accidentally not even one time in my wearing. I kind of dig this kind of bluish gray color they used on the internal bezel. I think it really offsets this light pale orange dial really well and that internal bezel is loomed as well which we'll take a look at at the end of the video. The case is precisely what you would expect from Traska. Very much the same design language as all their other watches. A nice highly evolved design that I just think it wears well. It looks great. You have these kind of rounded sides, which I just think make for a smoother, softer feeling watch. You always get drilled lugs, a slight turndown, really nice flat case back 
doesn't show much of it at all on the sides. Really nice size proportion of the case side there. The external fixed bezel on the top, as you can see, has a polished 45 brushed on the sides. And as always with Trasker, you're going to get really nice, fine brushing with really nice, precise transitions. The polished chamfers that run along the edges or the corners of the case are always really well done. I love the way they pop between the two areas of brushing. On this side, you'll see you have two crowns. The time setting crown is signed with the Trasca logo and on the internal bezel they use the traditional crosshatch pattern to differentiate it. Flipping it over to look at the case back you have just a really plain circular brushed case back. Always prefer brushing to polished case backs. Polished case backs tend to be a little sticky. I have a minor spec sheet around the outside but just a really tasteful well done case back. From this view, we can also see that we have solid end links and they are female end links. They are fitted so well to the case. I just like how the precision of that kind of faux center link is really tight and the corners are sharp. Again, you have drilled lugs, so changing and using this bracelet is never an issue. It's always real easy on these Traskas. Again, you have this Oyster bracelet, full four millimeter taper from 20 down to 16 at the clasp, and it is a fully articulating bracelet, so it's gonna stack and crumple in all the ways and just melt to the shape of your wrist perfectly. The clasp on it, of course, you have the Trasca Perlage finishing on the internal scissor mechanism. The outside is just a very simple, minimal two push button release with a signed Trasca logo. And taking a look at their links, they are fixed with screws. And all of Trasca's bracelets are fitted with screws, really nice thick ones too. You'll be able to use your 1.6 millimeter screwdriver, no problems adjusting or sizing the bracelet whatsoever. And you can see how nice and fine that brushing is as well. My particular example here seems to have settled in at, well, just about zero seconds per day deviation, running just about perfect, a nice healthy amplitude of 280, and a minimal beat error of 0.4 milliseconds. Going over the dimensions, now this is a kind of rounded case side, but at its widest point to widest point as I measured it, it came in at 38.7 millimeters with a lug tip to lug tip measurement of 46.1 millimeters. And it comes in at 11.9 millimeters thick, that is including the sapphire crystal, and it has a 20 millimeter lug width. Going over some of the other specs, we have a low dome box sapphire crystal. As always, Trasca uses BGW9 loom on the dial, hands, and on the internal bezel here. It is running the Miyota 9039, which is a true no date movement, no phantom date position, and it has 150 meters of water resistance. Now on the OEM bracelet size for my seven and a quarter inch wrist, it came in at 128 grams. And here's how it wears on my seven and a quarter inch wrist. And like I mentioned earlier, the sizing on this one is one of the things that really sold me. I think the sizing is just perfect. Look what a great size that is for a compressor dual crown style watch. I mean, I'll tell you when I first saw this orange, I thought salmon, oh no, that's really close to my skin tone. And well, well, well maybe that this pale orange has really grown on me. First up here it is next to the Trasca commuter and at 36.5 millimeters it is a full two millimeters smaller than the Seafarer and I think both of these wear pretty true to their size while the dial openings themselves might be very similar it's that internal bezel that makes up the little bit of extra size. Moving up a little bit to another 38 and a half, 39 ish millimeter diver. This is the Seiko Solar. Now, the Seiko has a smaller dial and a fatter bezel, so it's going to wear and present like a little bit smaller of a watch, but you know, the overall wearing experience of these is not very different. 
Moving up just a little bit more into the SPB, which now we're talking, I think, 40 and a half at the bezel, so a couple millimeters bigger. Again, smaller dial opening will play tricks on the eyes, but I do think at this point, this Seiko SPB is going to wear a little bit larger than the Trasca Seafarer. Lastly, because we cannot go without a comparison to the Seiko SKX, 42 and a half millimeters, you know, we're a full four millimeters bigger, and I think you can see every bit of it here. Just a larger, bulkier dive watch, thicker as well. You're going to get a much more svelte wearing experience out of the Trasca Seafarer. And lastly, let's check out the loom. Keep the and there you go check it out that is a beautiful application of bgw9 i don't know if it's my new camera phone or people are just making brighter bgw9 but man i'm not having much trouble getting my camera to focus on the bgw9 loom like i usually do it's a little bit brighter here on the dial and hands than it is on that internal bezel as might be expected but both are very legible really easy to pick up Looks great. There you go, the new Trasca Venturer. The more divey styled compressor would probably get the nod for me over the more travel oriented Venturer, but both are killer watches. I really want one of these. It's the perfect sizing and the printed dial just really do it for me, but I also really like this new colorway. Pretty killer. All right, before I let you guys go, sneaker check. I'm wearing my Sakai Blazers and that's it, I'm out. If it's not too much trouble, please like, subscribe, and come back next time. Peace.